I like the little tone thing. I don't know if you heard it or not, but it gives me a gong saying, hey, when the one minute timer is up, it's up. So how you doing, Mary Lee? I'm doing great, Brian. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm so excited that you're here with me. Um, anybody who doesn't know who you are, well, they need to get to know you. Uh, you know, you can get some more uh, more fans, more followers. Um, if you don't know Mary Lee, Mary Lee is a longtime friend. We actually uh, went to high school together. Not going to say what year we graduated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But neither one of us look our age, so it's okay. You wouldn't believe it if I told you. <laughs> um, Mary Lee's in my opinion, one of the top network marketers I've ever known. Um, I've known a lot of them and she's just high quality, high skill, high class. And uh, I had the opportunity to see a video that you did, Marilee, uh, down in Mexico, um, talking about avatars, which basically is, um, you know, it's the same thing as an ideal customer. And I, that's why I wanted to bring you on, even though your main industry is network marketing. Um, you've got a lot of background in other things too. So I thought with that in mind, we should talk a little bit about how businesses and how people in general, consultants, whatever type of business they're in, um, can define who their ideal customer is, who their avatar is. Um, you know, especially right now, because there are so many people starting new businesses and starting things online because they can't go outside or they can go outside, but in very limited, uh, limited numbers. So um, I've seen some stats that there are tons of online businesses starting. So I thought it'd just be great if you and I could talk about how people can find and define what their ideal customer is. Absolutely. So hey, how was that? Was that a good intro for you or what? Ah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Honored to be here. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Mary, and how you got into all of this uh, marketing stuff. And we'll just kind of play it from there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, marketing, I think, is just something that, um, you know, life and business, when you're in business in general, you you figure out it's a very important piece to everything you do. And you know, even prior to my background in network marketing, I've been in network marketing for 13 years now, wow. but, which is crazy, amazing, um, but crazy. But prior to that, um, my husband and I have owned traditional businesses. Um, I actually worked in marketing with another company. It was a, in the yacht charter industry and really helped to identify, you know, who were they? Um, give them, you know, give them an identity and then literally try to target our audience. And so, you know, learning from all avenues of business in general, I think it's an important message to really hone in on who your customer is. It's how you're most effective, understanding who you are first, what's right. the message that you're trying to, to give and then um, identifying your audience. And so from all aspects of life, I mean, I think it just makes us a better human. It makes us a better communicator. And it makes us a better friend. I mean, if you think about marketing in general, I mean, we're trying, you're, I think that, you know, we say this um, in, in my industry, we talk about it, but I think it's true in life that your vibe attracts your tribe. And it's just those people that are around you, the people that are in your world, the people that you do business with, the people that you hang out with. Right. And I, you know, we say this in my industry as well. Um, you know, we're in a no like and trust business, but I believe that's true in every business that you do if you think about that in every avenue whether you're shopping online at a, at a company that a brand that you love um a store that you want to frequent you know when we're out and able to shop in stores right but any anybody that you're giving business to anybody that that you're if you've seen advertisement um on the television online wherever it is you as a consumer have to feel like you connect with that company, with that brand. And if that company or that that brand is resonating with you, you're gonna give their business. You know, yeah. you, you know, you're gonna you're gonna wanna work with them. You're gonna have that conversation. You're gonna wanna spend time there because it feels good. You make that connection. And I I think that just life in general and a little bit of my background in just marketing, owning our own businesses, 
Um, we own a traditional business as well currently. And, you know, I certainly know my demographic, my <laughs> avatar, right? right. So I, I know the conversation that I need to have in order to make the connections with them. So it's just important in life, but it's definitely important in business. Yeah, for sure. That's the, I like that. What did you, your, your tribe say that again? Your vibe attracts your tribe. Your vibe attracts your tribe. That's pretty yeah. cool. Did you come up with that or did you find that somewhere? Did totally you make that somewhere. Yeah, I rip, ripping and repeating it. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> Which is actually so much of what marketing is. I always, I always find it so funny. People go, do you hear this new thing? And it's like, well, really, that's not new. It's just packaged differently yep. by a different person. Um, it's so funny and not to get off topic too far, but you know, you always hear kids and go, Oh, did you hear that new song? It's like, yeah, that new song came out in the seventies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's really the song that you heard is not the cover version. It was the original. <laughs> now you're dating us. Now you're dating our age. <laughs> I was a little kid. I was, I was like a little kid when I was in the seventies. Oh yeah. Right yeah. There yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on which end of the 70s. Right. So, so Merrily, um, you kind of touched on it a little bit about, you know, about attracting your ideal customer. Let's talk about really what an avatar is and, and kind of define that a little bit so we can build on that. Yeah. You know, I think the avatar, it's been a, it's just a helpful conversation. It's a helpful, a helpful visualization of your your target audience, your demographic. So I think if I define the avatar, an avatar would be the persona or embodiment of your ideal customer. So, you know, whatever that is. And, you know, one of the conversations that I like to have when I'm talking about it and having people kind of identify that is get really specific. And when I say specific, I mean, I've even done this myself. And that's like, take a sheet of paper out. Um, you know, when you want to attract that ideal customer, get specific. What's their age? You know, male or female? Where do they live? Where do they hang out? Um, what kind of foods do they eat? What kind of activities are they involved in? What is your what is your product? What are you trying to target? And get really clear on which customer, what that customer looks like. What so, what is that avatar? So let's let's build an avatar. Let's build a let's come up with one. Um, yeah. what, kind of, what kind of industry do we want to play with? Well, you know, honestly, it can, we could be any industry. Pick, I know. Pick one. Just just okay. name an industry. Health and wellness. Perfect. Wonder where you found that one. <laughs> <laughs> Great industry. Hey. Um, so let's talk about that then. What would be your first steps um, to identifying your perfect customer to your avatar? An avatar really is just it's just, um, uh, what's the word I want? Um, just a term, just, you know, yeah. that means your ideal customer or client or business partner, whatever. Yeah. So just run us through the steps a little bit. What would be the first thing you would do to start identifying your avatar? I literally start with the list. And so I get specific and I, it's, it's a brainstorm session. Like, you know who your audience is, you know, or, or get clear on your audience. If you don't know who your audience is, who should your audience be? What, what is the product that you're trying to sell? So in my case, health and wellness um, mm -hmm. is the conversation that I like to have. But I also am trying to attract that tribe, attract people that are maybe in my, my interest level so, or my age or my demographic. So, for example, I might create an avatar that um, gets really specific if I want to target and have conversations. So um, one of the things that I like to do in the way that I, I will brand myself in this space, so even as my own example is, you know, even on social media, um, having a conversation that my avatar is going to relate to. So I've got to identify my avatar. So I know that maybe um, a female avatar between the ages of 30 and 55. I mean, just as an example. So. I may be looking for somebody that is into health and fitness already, somebody that is fitness minded, health minded, they're active. So maybe they like hiking, maybe they like outdoor activities. Maybe I'm going to find that avatar in places like um, groups. So social media platform is great to find people in groups that are in the health and fitness, or maybe they're in a vegan group or, 
you know, just getting specific on what the interest would be. Um, also, always, you know, looking for, for myself, you know, looking for that entrepreneurial minded person. I might find them in business type of groups where they're having that business conversation. So, um, but I also like to have fun. So maybe um, somebody that has a great sense of humor. I like to post things that are funny. And yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. But it's I like, like I, little, I like your little avatar person from uh, from Bitmoji. I think that's great. Absolutely, and I actually use my Bitmoji. And actually, as a practice, if you're familiar with the Bit Bitmoji, um, you can actually you know create this little image, your your own caricature. And in the practice, um, I literally have trained this before. Like, get so clear on your avatar. What do they look like? You know, like so if, that, if I'm looking for that avatar in that age group, that demographic between 30 and 55, female, you know, what's she gonna look like if she's into fitness? Am I picturing her at the gym? You know, where are you seeing this? Is she gonna be in that um, hashtag healthy living type of a group? You know, where am I gonna find that person? And so I get specific and when I'm posting things or when I'm targeting that audience, I'm going to be relevant in my conversation to that person. And I think that's where the connection happens. Yeah, that's really important to be to be relevant, to relate to the people that you're talking to, yeah. rather than just kind of spitballing and hoping that you can relate to them. Because you, you touched on it before, and it's true in business, that you need that no like, and trust factor. Yep. Um, and I know that's like so cliche, but it's so true. If you, if, you know, yeah. if people don't know you to begin with, which is you identifying your avatar and starting to identify with that person, they're never going to get to like you, you know, because you don't, you don't relate. So yep. Yep. Um, yeah, which kind of, kind of brings me into the, the next thing of why would somebody really want to create an avatar um, rather than just go after everybody? I mean, you know, in, in, traditional marketing, we've seen it in commercials, you know, where they just throw out a commercial and it's supposed to attract everybody. Um, is that the way to do things now? Or should we kind of pivot and change a little bit to be more specific? I think pivoting and changing is a powerful thing. I think, um, you know, you think about just how we all connect, you know, you, you watch movies, you, you relate to people online. Um, you know, by just conversation, can people relate to what it is that you're doing? And can authenticity is kind of the conversation of the of the day. And I think the more authentic you are, the more people can relate to you. The more clear you are on your messaging, people can go, oh yeah, like they're speaking to me. So I know a lot of times you'll see commercials even where they might a Hallmark commercial is a really good example of this. Like. You know, they'll they'll be doing and maybe they don't do them right now. I don't watch a whole lot of TV, but I know back in the day, Hallmark commercials. I remember watching some of them where, you know, they'd be reading this card or connecting. And it's this story about a you know mother and a son connecting or whatever. And man, it's the information went from my head to my heart. And all of a sudden, um, even if it wasn't my pain point, it was an emotional connection. And I think that that's a really important piece of just knowing who your audience is and knowing if you have a way of somehow emotionally connecting mm -hmm. to them or speaking their language so that they feel like they can relate to you you've broken through so many barriers um you know maybe they don't even recognize it but all of a sudden they can relate to you your brand your your product whatever that is because right. you've made some kind of an authentic emotional connection does that make sense yeah yeah you, i mean the it's it's all about that connection. It's all about you know, again going back to relating to the people that you're you're talking with. And it's not even so much. I don't even think it's any more marketing to people because people have gotten so smart. You know, I, I mean, yeah. and that's not to to knock people and their brains, and their thinking, but people have become so um, intelligent about being marketed to yeah that you know to be genuine now and, and i hate the word transparent because it's again being so cliche but you do almost need to be transparent with people and and be clear in your conversation with them so you can relate more um 
and build that relationship because then you can actually sell to them because ultimately that's what we are talking about and is marketing and sales and it doesn't even matter if it's business um i Back in the olden days when I did network marketing, we always talked about people who, oh, I don't like doing sales. And it's like, well, are you married? It's like, well, yeah. <laughs> like, well, to talk about a, being a salesperson. I mean, you know, you throw exactly. yourself on somebody to spend the rest of their life with you for crying out loud. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's a, that's a pitch. I'd like to hear that pitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. No, that's very, very true. Oh yeah, for sure. It's it's. Uh, I'm just thinking um, how how true that is, and how how relevant people need to become, or re relatable people need to become in their messaging. And to do that, they need to come up with with that um, with their avatar. You mentioned you mentioned your ideal customer, you know, being fit and healthy and and different things like that. What if what about other types of customers how about building other avatars is that something to do or should people stick with one narrow focus or should they have a few different types of people that they market to and, and try to relate to no that's a good question brian and i think um you know so in the space of so we used health and wellness as an example well Health and wellness it doesn't necessarily only relate to people that are healthy. So I might be targeting a pain point in, and that is a broader audience. So people that aren't healthy, but they're looking to become healthier, that can be anybody. And so, you know, of course, I have different avatars that I've created. So um, I know, like, Brian, if you and I are talking about health and wellness, you're a guy, and I definitely going to have a bit of a different conversation, but I think it comes back to really understanding your brand well, so that you know how to pivot in a conversation and find a place that it's going to fit for different demographics. And again, the avatar is really your demographic, it's just another sure. term for your demographic, your audience. And so... Um, in that, in a content, whether it's by conversation or something you print or something you post or something you, you know, say, um, that has to be relevant to that person. But I, again, I think it just comes back to knowing your brand really well. Uh, you know, all the ins and outs. Who is that audience? So that could be a very broad audience, but in your marketing message, right? Narrowing down the avatar and identifying what is that specific demographic. So maybe a demographic and this is this is relevant in my in my world you know the demographic of people wanting to feel better do better have more energy sleep better who doesn't want that i mean that's kind of everybody but um i might have a message um or I might have a post or something that can relate to somebody maybe they're 60 to 70 years old and they're just feeling really like they need more energy like crazy um, they're, they need better mental clarity. Well, I'm going to have my messaging geared towards that avatar, that conversation. So I, so I don't want to blow something out. So I'm just talking over everyone's head. Mm -hmm. You have to have messaging that is clear. You just have to know what avatar that you're speaking to. So that that's interesting because neither one of us are in our sixties or seventies. Um, what if, what if, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> We're going to be healthy 60 and 70 year olds. Yes, heck yes. Um, believe it or not, I actually am one of Marilee's customers. So, <laughs> <laughs> you are. Yeah. Uh, what if what if you're trying to build a uh, an avatar? So, okay. First thing you said was you need to know your product. So, regardless of whether it's health and wellness or um, yacht cleaning, you need to know who your trying to target okay yep. so to do that you need to know what your business is how, how to define your business um do you have any steps tricks tips or anything like that on how somebody can define what their business is because sometimes when people start a business they just have this you know this big umbrella overwhelming idea but they haven't really honed it in yet how can we help somebody understand how or what their what their business actually is. 
I think it's getting clear on your brand, understanding your brand. What is your story? What's the product that you have to sell? So what's your story? That was that's yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big it's a big piece of it. It's really understanding what the message is that you're trying to create. Understand your brand, understand it well and understand, you know, it just real. I think it's really thinking about who who your best audience is. If you could just in an ideal world, I mean, literally like let's envision your ideal business. What would that look like okay. um, in that? You also have to just have a clear identification on who you are and what your message is like, know it inside and out. And then who is it going to be relevant to? So um, in our traditional business, um, we own a yacht detailing business, but I didn't want to just cater to the broadest audience. I wanted to hone it in as more of a niche. And so our targeted audience there is a high end client base. And so we are giving a high end detail. So if you think about taking, you know, if you owned a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and you wanted to take it to a, you know, a, a high end detail or a Porsche or whatever, you want to take it to a high end detailer. Mm -hmm different conversation than just going to a car wash per se. So my conversation is, is different and targeted to that niche, but um, I've had to kind of hone that conversation in for that avatar. And then when I got crystal clear on this is who I want to cater to, this is the audience I'm going to focus on because I know what we're going to deliver on our end clearly mm -hmm. what we could deliver. Then I clearly knew what audience I wanted to go after. And so um, honing that in, then then we built a business. We built a business that we book a year ahead in our schedule because we got so clear on that messaging piece of it. So it's important to do that. But when you're crystal clear, there's no questioning or confusion from your customer or your mm -hmm. potential prospect on what it is that you do. They will know you because they're going to resonate with the service that you have to provide. That makes sense. What if though, because we were talking to you, you mentioned the 67 year olds. What if it's, what if your target or what if you want to target somebody that's not in your, you know, in your demographic or somebody that you can directly relate to, but you know that your product service, whatever can actually serve those people. How do you, how do you go about finding out information about that group for me um you know in my platform and how that that has been relevant for me is i will um become visible and try to identify maybe a pain point um that can be something that will attract listeners of all kinds so if i can you know who struggles with their sleep who is stuck in a brain fog that can be a broad audience. And I can guarantee I've had people in their twenties that have reached out going, I can't sleep at night. Like I, mm -hmm. I'm struggling with that. And so that message just on identifying again, it goes back to knowing what my product is going to do or my service is going to provide that that's clear. I know what it can do. So getting the message out, sometimes it's just identifying with, I believe the pain point, what is that message that somebody's going to hear that they're going to be relevant to. And I, I'll tell you, Brian, that's a really good question to ask because in that and doing exactly what I said, just throwing something out that might be just more of a general, general pain point, a service, you know, mm -hmm. um, throwing something out like that, I'll find a demographic that's hiding that I didn't even know was out there. And that's a good example that I just gave because I didn't realize that there were 20 somethings that were struggling with their sleep. Initially, I thought that might be somebody more in my my age group, my age bracket, um, but uh, but not necessarily in a younger age group. But you throw that out there, and you're like, "Whoa! I didn't even realize this is a very relevant conversation for somebody." So sometimes um, you happen up on it, but it does make me realize that just having the conversation and identifying some pain points that people may have um, that may be relevant to whatever product it is that you have um, can be a really good way to kind of hone that in. Gotcha. So, so you go into a group, say like on Facebook or something, how do you enter into that conversation? I mean, cause you can't just throw out the question, Hey, who's having trouble sleeping and the people who are connected to you through your personal Facebook or th even through your business, they already know you. 
So if you're going to these new groups, how do you even enter into that conversation to start being able to um, pull some of those people out to identify them? I will actually, because I have gone through my profile and I've really cleaned it up and I know clearly what my messaging is, I'm not branding my company, I'm branding myself. I'm branding what I have the ability to do. I happen to have a product that can help, but you don't go to my timeline and actually even know what company I'm with because True. I, I want to be that person that um, you know, like, and trust. But what I do, and I think the best way to think about it, so, you know, to the point in your question, you know, how do you do that on, say, Facebook or social media when you're in groups? So finding targeted groups, I definitely know that I, I might want to find somebody that's in that fitness world or, um, you know, that that's health minded. So there's mm -hmm. people that are going to be health minded or looking for health solutions in different groups. So typically what I do is I will, you know, find those groups and you can search, you know, all, you can, there's thousands and thousands of different types of groups. So find one or go in several and, you know, find, find if that, if that's kind of your vibe in that group, you know, if you like the conversation that's happening, I've gone in groups before and I'm like, yeah, this is not, this wasn't <laughs> what I was hoping for, but there's other groups that are in, you know, that have a lot of value to give. And I think the way for you to stand out is when I know, I know what I have, I know what I have as a product. I know um, that it's relevant for so many people, but what I'll, what I'll end up doing is go inside the group and just kind of hang out there for a couple weeks and then get, get clear on the conversation that that group's going to be kind of, I hate to overuse this word today, but I'm using it a lot vibing, right. you know, what are they vibing with? And then start giving value. Um, don't go in and start to just farm and target people necessarily, but literally start to give value and throw something that might be just a, a generic valuable piece in there and then throw some more content. And as people start resonating with you, I, I do this all the time. Like if somebody's liking something or commenting on something, if I give value in a group, I'll go over and, you know, I'll maybe drop them a message. Hey, thanks so much for interacting, you know, you know, and Hey, just took, to, took a look at your timeline. Um, cool. You live in California. I love California. I'm on the West coast too. You know, just right. start connecting, having conversations. That's where that authenticity comes where you can develop those connections. And mm -hmm. then, you know, then, then you send them a friend request and then, you know, you go on their timeline and you start looking, you're like, Hey, I like this person. And, um, I like the conversation they have and, you know, Hey, they have a family too, or, you know, whatever it is right. that you can relate to connect to. And I think in a social media platform, especially, that's a wonderful way to make connections with people. But I don't go in groups and start dropping my website. <laughs> I mean, that's the fastest way to get kicked out of something. But I think that, you know, in business in general, even when you think about the scope of an avatar, when it all comes down to it, I think the most successful marketers are people that are relatable. And it, it comes down to relationships. And so... I think the neatest thing that you can really do with with whatever product it is that you have is that I think that long term relationships. Um, there's this amazing book out there called The Game of Networking, and um, it's mm. it's written by a friend of mine, Rob Sperry, and he's literally talking about long term relationships in business in general are hugely effective. Those are things that can take you 10, 20, 30 years down the road. And I think you want to think about that long term when you're marketing anything so that, you know, you're relevant to to somebody based off your relationship with them. You know, you sometimes can have an ebb and flow in life mm -hmm. where you're in one business and maybe 10 years down the road, you're in a different business. But you have found your tribe, your vibe attracts your tribe. You have found that tribe. You found that avatar. You found that demographic for whatever product it is that you're promoting at that time and maybe it's something you're going to promote for the rest of your life but whatever that is you developed relationships and connections and I think that's a really important piece of it and Brian I know you and I've talked about this a little bit before but I think it's relevant to this conversation that when you do that well and you can market yourself well um, I know I've been you know speaking and doing some trainings and and people notice me in social media but now we get to the point where people will come up and they will you know, <laughs> been following me or they, I, I don't even know who these people are. So maybe we're not even friends, but they're following me. And I think, you know, you're doing something well when people come to you and say, oh my gosh, 
I love your Great Dane. I love those <laughs> posting. It's so fun to watch you guys traveling or doing whatever it is. They feel like they know me. Yeah. And that's when you know you're getting your message out right is that, you know, people feel like they know you completely, like they're connected, <laughs> even though you don't know them. You know what that, you know what right. I mean? I do. I do. Right yeah, I do. It's funny because you mentioned the travel part and I'd go to different events and things and people are like, oh man, I just saw you were in Jamaica or I just saw you were in Mexico or where it's like, yeah. And right now it's so weird because by now I probably would have been to a couple more countries this year and I've been here. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, I know we're all ready to travel like crazy, but yeah, no, that's such a great example. And I think it's, you know, it's what, it's the beauty of social media and it's the beauty of what our world is today. If you think about the difference even 10 years ago, I mean, it's social media in general has just made the world a smaller place. Yeah. And that's a really great thing. And I think that right now, um, more than ever, knowing your brand and taking this time to just like really rise above all the noise, all the confusion, get really clear on your brand and you know, know your audience well, it's a time for you to shine more than ever before. Stand out from everybody else. Get so clear on your message that you give so much value to the world. People resonate, you stand out, you make that connection and it will take you so far. It will take you so far. That was really key that you said about standing out above the noise um, because there's so much of it online now, you know? Yeah. How do you rise above the noise and clutter and, and just the overwhelm? And I think part of that is in developing that, you know, your avatar and getting to know your perfect person so well that you just already have that relationship when you start. Um, and that's part of it. It's, I'm just thinking back, Tony Robbins actually talked about you know, wanting to get married and he wrote in his journal, his perfect mate down to hair color and neighborhood that she lived in and all of that. And his story goes on that that's exactly the person that he ended up marrying was almost exactly um, who he had written down. And I think Brendan Burchard tells the same kind of a story that he got that whole idea from Tony Robbins. And um, becoming the person that you want to attract. So I'm wondering, you know, is an avatar the type of person that you want to attract, or is it somebody that you kind of want to become? I, I don't know. That was just kind of a, a random thought. And I know that wasn't something we talked about. Yeah. Him, but um, you know, it, it could be, I think, you know, when you're, I think, I think of it more in the way of, you know, who do I want to do business with? Who do I want to have in my life? And, you know, I think in any business that we've owned, anything that we've been involved in, um, I've always looked at it as like that long-term, you know, relationship. And you, you think about that. I mean, I don't, I don't care what it is that you're selling. If, you know, think about Nordstrom's, Nordstrom's as an example. I mean, um, I love Nordstrom's. I know you do. Nordstrom's <laughs> make me feel good when I'm online shopping with them. When I walk in the store, their customer service is amazing. They have a return policy that's so fantastic. There's every element and every layer of they make me feel good. It's a good relationship all the way through. And they've been that way forever, consistency. And so it's something, It's that is a, a brand. I mean, talk about a brand that I know, I like, and I trust, absolutely trust. Um, and I think do that- you, Do you think they knew you before you came into the store? Absolutely, they did. I mean, really? they, they know, even by the departments that they have set up in, in their store, they have, you know, they know they're targeting different audiences. You can look in one section, the clothing styles are for a certain, age group, demographic. So maybe there's a more professional section over here. You walk into that section, you hear more professional music. But if you want to go over here, now I want to feel young and go in the younger section. Forever 21. <laughs> Not the section, but you know, the, the, the younger section, I'm going to go out over there and just hip hop along while I'm looking through the clothes racks. They know that audience. And I think that that, I mean, just think about it in all terms of marketing. They absolutely you know, knew that and that kind of grown up with them. So I started out in that little, you know, younger department, but 
you know, continue moving through, um, you know, and, and that experience with that store has developed a long-term relationship. And I think that that, that is really what we do. And so I don't know if that answers your question totally, but yeah. I don't think that, you know, I, I don't look at it like I want to become that avatar necessarily, but, um, but I definitely want to resonate with my avatar because, you know, I think when you're passionate about whatever it is that you're marketing, you know, you, you know, your brand so well, and obviously, you know, if you have your brand, your product, whatever it is, if you own your company, you love it, uh, you know, you're passionate mm -hmm. about it, you want to get that message out, but you're also looking for those people that are going to uh, be attracted to your message. And there's a ton of people out there that are attracted to different brands and types of things. And so, um, anyway, does that answer your question kind of? No, for sure. Um, <coughs> part of that, I was thinking part of that is, you know, being passionate about what you're doing um, and knowing your own story. Yes. You know, if you don't know your own story, you might not be able to come up with a, with your avatar because you don't even know how to identify with your with yourself, with your own business. Yeah. Um, what would you What would you suggest somebody, you know, in the beginning stages, or even even somebody who's been around for a while? So let's go that route a little bit because because people have so much of this extra extra time on their hands. Um, but you know, they may have gotten away from their their true passion for their business. Mm -hmm. How do they redefine themselves to get that back a little bit to be able to find their their ideal customer? You have any idea? Yeah, no, that's a really good question, and I think that um, you know, even in the space that that I work with, I work with a lot of different you know people, and you know that can happen. I mean, I, life goes along, and you can kind of get in a slump, and you're like, oh, I'm just I'm kind of getting lost in the mix. Um, so you know, we call it identifying your why, but that's true in any business. Like you have to be clear on why you're doing what you're doing, but there's also a passion that you can connect into your why. And sometimes it's, it's going back to what, what caught your attention in the very beginning. And I think it's a really important thing. Sometimes you've got to go back to that beginning stage and you know, what is it that I saw that I was so excited about my product, my brand, whatever it was, you know, what was that defining moment that made you decide, I want to share this message. I want to promote, you know, this product, this brand, this is what I wanted to wrap myself around. What was it? Cause again, I know we talked about it earlier, but it's sometimes it, we get in our head a lot of times. And I think when you can connect back down to your heart and re-identify, um, you know, what made you start? So when I do that in a practical sense, I'll go have, I'll have a conversation with maybe one of my teammates and, you know, I'll literally just talk, let's talk it out. Hey, you know, what is it that you first saw here? You know, what's that very defining moment that made you want to say yes, that you're going to move forward in this. And I'll tell you, honestly, Brian, sometimes having those conversations, can even be like you get choked up tearful moments because you're connecting back you're getting someone out of their head and you're getting back to their heart and they're recognizing wow let's get rid of all the distractions and get back to that point of what i saw in this in the very beginning and why i was so excited or passionate about sharing this message and that's true in any business sure. across the board it's just a lot of times i think we get um you know sometimes um, you can't see through the forest that the forest is so thick and you know, we get we get tunnel vision a lot of times um, With whatever brand it is that we're that we're promoting or we're talking about we get tunnel vision We get stuck in there and just the doing piece of it and we we lose the relevancy of the message mm -hmm. And I think that's getting back to that reason why you started reason why you thought it was such a passionate piece and I'll tell you this I know a lot of times, like in the very beginning of most people's businesses or journeys, um, that why that reason why can be one thing. But as time goes on, you might outgrow that why. So you have to identify something that continues to move you forward. So sometimes you have to just pivot a little bit mm -hmm. and change your vision. You know, I, I was I was on this. Um, it's called the Rise Up Challenge, and it was absolutely this fantastic conversation that ha that happened during this um, COVID nineteen thing, and um, it was basically a bunch of people that own businesses. A lot of them are speakers, trainers, 
they're used to being on platforms and they want the guy that kind of headed it up was saying he had millions of dollars of training, you know, stage events that were canceled within a matter of, you know, 72 hours because yeah. every, the world shut down. And so he can't physically be out there. And so his whole premise of his conversation was, he said, so I, I was really down and out about it for a while. And he said, then I actually came around and I said, he said, I had to learn to pivot. And he said, what happened in this time of my life is the best thing that could have happened where I recognized the weaknesses in my business platform that I needed to fill. So what are the gaps that you need to fill when you have moments where you kind of get stuck or you get stuck in your head or you realize, you know, maybe you're in that time right now in your business where you're just kind of like, wow, um, realizing that I need a bigger digital presence or, you know, what are those things? You know, we're talking about rising above and standing out. What's going to make your conversation stand out, stick out where people can be relevant? Um, this can be a beautiful time. I think sometimes, oh, yeah. you know, when you're flatlined, we get stuck there sometimes. But what I would encourage people to do is don't get stuck there. Like it's pivot time. It's time to like literally where's the gap and, you know, figure that out, fill that out. But that can be that can be the biggest pivot point in your business, whatever that is, which is a beautiful thing where you get to fill those gaps. You didn't know they were there before. But man, can you imagine then when life starts to kind of get back to normal, more normal or new right. normal? You know, you've filled some gaps, but you've grown as a person. You've, you, you've filled in those voids and now you have a more well-rounded business all the way around, a more well-rounded you. Yeah, no, that's great. That's, and you're so totally dead on, you know, making making those shifts and, and pivots and changes and and recognizing in yourself what needs to be different. And, and now we have the quote unquote time to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think really we have more time because we're not driving as much. I don't think we have any more time necessarily. It's just, there's a lot of stuff that we're not having to do. Um, Collectively, yeah. I mean, I know you and I, our commutes are pretty long. Like, yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love my commute, but I miss the travel. I miss traveling. Yeah, I was missing the horn in the background, by the way. When we were on the phone pre-meeting, um, your, your your honker was in the background. And uh, the Great Dane was squeaking <laughs> a squeaky toy. Little nailed yeah. on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, you mentioned you, you mentioned that we, in general, um, grow and have to change and look at different things. What about the avatar? Can your avatar? What if? What if? Because you mentioned the whole Nordstrom's thing and starting in the teeny bopper section and now being into the more professional section, um, unless you want to be a teeny bopper again. <laughs> <laughs> can 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 that avatar evolve and grow and mature also? Can you, I mean, can you keep with the same avatar and let that that avatar mature along with you? Absolutely. And I think that comes part of the pivot too, because I, you know, I recognize, I know my audience and in, in our traditional business and in my, you know, networking business, I know my audience, but I also know that the conversation has changed for the whole world. It's, it's changed. So, pivoting and now being relevant to what is is current and relevant for my customer base um, or my prospect base um, I want to speak their language and I want I want to be a relatable to them and so um, they, yeah absolutely I think what you don't want to do when you're marketing is if you're not tuned into what your the needs of your avatar are if you're not understanding what the current and relevant pain points are, you're going to talk right over the top of their head and they're not going to be able to relate to you. So I think it's staying in tune with the ever changing. I mean, avatars to me are, are demographic. They're people we're dealing with. So you have to be relevant to the day, relevant to the conversation, relevant to the world events, what's affecting them. And even if you're having to pivot in your business, maybe it's pivoting your message a little bit. How is your message relevant to the need of your avatar today? Not a month ago, not a year ago, today. And that's just staying in tune. Um, again, no like trust business, yeah. every business. You have to stay relevant in your conversation and know what the needs are of your avatar. That's a really important question, actually, Brian. Yeah, that's 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 really good is, is staying relevant and staying in the conversation. So 
yep. um, you know, staying present in that conversation, just like any other relationship, yep. you know, even though it's online and you may never, you may never meet that person, you know, mm -hmm. you might not really even have a, a, an actual conversation with them, staying relevant and staying in their mind is what's important. You know, Absolutely. Staying, staying top of mind, staying yep. top of mind. Um, so because, because we're kind of a little bit of a overlap in conversation with social media also, how often do you post things to your, to your clientele, to your perfect customer avatar person? Great question. So, you know, one of the, the conversations that we've been talking about, you know, currently is that, you know, really there, if you on social media can identify like five main pillars. So we talk about staying top of mind by posting. So I typically am not posting more than one to two times a day, but I'm consistent. So um, I don't go days on end without showing up. I want to stay top of mind, but I also want to give a lot of value. So Again, it goes back to that conversation of knowing who I am and identifying my brand, my conversation. So um, if I took you know, five pillars, if I defined myself and the way I did this, Brian, because I know you're gonna ask this question if I don't tell you right now, <laughs> identifying that was really taking a sheet of paper and just brainstorming, like what are the things that you know, fuel me? What, what am I all about? I want the world to understand who I am and be, irrelevant to, to their conversation, but I want them to be able to relate to me. So there is a bit of transparency on social media. Um, it's not being fake. It's being who you are, being authentic, being real. That's what people want. I mean, that's what I want. I want authentic relationships, connections as well. And so it's identifying those, those main things. Um, you know, inspirational quotes are one of the things that I love to give value. I, I believe in people to the core. I yep. believe we all have greatness inside of us. I mean, let's just go there for a second. Like we were created for a purpose. You have a message. Your story is relevant. I don't care what it is you went through. It could have been extreme brokenness. It could have been, you know, a, a great journey. Your story is so relevant. And when people can connect to you, um, your story is here for a purpose. And so I think that relatability is again gonna attract your tribe, sure. but it also can be part of one of those key pillars. So I love to believe in people. I've had to overcome quite a few things in my life. I had a, um, I, I literally grew up with an anxiety disorder. Um, I hit a, a point in my life where I just crashed down in a, a real deep depression and, and kind of coming out of that and um, learning how to, to rise above that and get a clear message is part of my story. And so um, I believe in people, you know, I think all of us are born with that. We know we have something inside. So getting clear on your message, understanding that and identifying five pillars that maybe best describe you and posting about those things consistently is gonna solidify your brand. So people know if they come to my timeline that, you know, I love health and wellness. I love to, I, I love to be active. Um, I love fitness, hiking. I love photography. It's just one of my things. I have a creative piece to me. And so I share bits of that. And I also I haven't seen your photography. They're missing out. Oh, <laughs> thank you. But yeah. it, literally, well, but I always, just, it always reminds me. I love seeing your, your photos because it reminds me of home. Yeah, exactly. Like, See? Like, oh man, look at that. It's so awesome. Oh wait, that's a rainy day. You can have that one. <laughs> <laughs> But when the sun shines, you know, I have my camera out. Oh, man. But, I, you know, people know my life. They know. Actually, we have a dog, a great Dane. His name's Wiley. And Wiley, I know Brian's told me this. Like, you need to have a Facebook account just for Wiley. He has a fan following. But <laughs> it's so he fun. His avatar. Yeah, yeah, I do actually have a, a Wiley avatar. There, I, We do. <laughs> I'll send it to you. It's hilarious. But. It is literally dog people have come into my world because I'm posting things about him. And, you know, we, we have a product, you know, with my company that is extremely beneficial for animals as well. And so, you know, because of that, I'm identifying five things that I'm going to be posting about consistently. And when I'm talking about even my product, I'm not talking about, I'm not holding the brand up. I'm not holding that out. I'm showing the benefits of what it does, what it is. Um, 
what it what it can give and how it can benefit. But I'm only talking about that if I have five pillars and I'm posting, you know, five days a week or seven days a week, I'm going to be posting only 20% about that. So I don't get too heavy on one pillar. I'm literally trying to spread it out. But people know when they continue to follow me or continue to um, come to my timeline, they know they're going to get value. They know that they're going to feel good. You know that that maybe it's going to be an encouragement for the day or I definitely one of my pillars is humor. So I like to make people laugh and, you know, we laugh at ourselves. We laugh at the silliness in life or laugh at my dog, whatever it is. <laughs> but I want people to be able to resonate and know that I am trying to attract fun, loving people as well um, that that have an optimistic view of life and, you know, dream bigger and believe in the ability that they have in themselves to grow and do more and be more. Um, that's what I'm about, but you know that because of the branding that I do. So I, I say like, you know, choose five pillars that best describe you and be consistent in your messaging so that people understand what, you, who you are, that's your brand. Right No, that's so awesome. I mean, you, you hit the nail like right on the head as they would say, um, with just how to post and how to put things out and how to, um, you know, how to communicate with people, which ultimately is the whole key to this whole conversation. You know, yeah, we all need to have avatars for our business. We need to be able to identify the people that we're marketing to and selling to and, and being in those business relationships with. But really, it comes down to knowing who you are and knowing your business and what your core is. Because once you know your core and your core beliefs and and what what keeps you relevant in your own world is actually what you want to attract in the long run. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. That's it's relationships. When it comes down to it, um, understand that your avatar is a person, you know, the people that you're dealing with. And that's, that's the gold in all of it. That's so cool. Merrily, it's been fun chatting with you. Um, how do people get in touch with you? Is it at Merrily Marisich? Uh, is that right? At Merrily Marisich? Yeah, absolutely. Or find me on Facebook. Yeah, Merrily Marisich. That's yeah. me. Yeah. So it's it's a different spelling. It's uh but if you're from the Pacific Northwest, um we all know that that's normal up there. <laughs> <laughs> it is. A little bit of a Croatian community that we live in, and that's my hubby for sure. Of of almost 29 years. Amazing, amazing. Now, see, who's ta who's giving out ages now? Okay, I guess I just did. <laughs> uh -huh. So another thing that, um, that I wanted to put out there for people just in case they want to understand and, and have a better idea how to put together an avatar is um, this here. Just a quick link. Copy that down, and that'll take you to a page where you can actually put in your email. I'm not going to let you get it for free. But put in your email and um, then you can download a, uh, a template on how to put together your avatar, which goes over so much of what Marilee was talking about with, you know, even as far as a picture and, you know, whether they have family, how many kids they have, they have pets, you know, what their favorite color is, you know, what kind of car they drive. I mean, it's, it's, it's all these little details. It's things that you don't even really think about initially um i know the first time i put together uh did an avatar project for my own business um really it wasn't very detailed and it was hard to market to a not very detailed group of people because it was just kind of like a blob uh but once i first learned about hey find a picture go online go to a, a stock photo site you know um uh, I can't even think of one off the top of my head. I have them all favorited. But just go and find the picture or a picture of somebody that you want to attract and then start identifying the traits of that person. So, yeah. I love that. Well, that's what you're all about, Brian. And now you do an amazing job in helping people get focused on what they do. I mean, it's, it's, it's part of your brand, focused idea. So I love that. And you do an amazing job helping people do that. I try. I try. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mayor. Is there anything else that we should touch on really quickly before I let you run and do your awesomeness? I just think it's a time to shine more than anything. I mean, take this time and get really crystal clear on what it is that you want out of life, out of business. 
know your targeted audience and just get crystal clear on that message and know that what you have, whatever that is, is a gift to offer and you, that will resonate with your audience and you will touch lives. And I don't think there's any better feeling in the world than giving back to people and building those relationships and those connections. It's the best feeling ever. That's awesome. And I'll let it go on that because I can't say it any better than what you just did. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put, um, put you back up there. Let's see. So people can find you on Facebook because, hey, maybe you said something in there that people want to uh, connect with you even more. So Marilee, it's mm -hmm. been so much fun chatting with you. And I look forward to getting another opportunity, hopefully in the near future. I would love it. My pleasure. This has been an honor and a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. You bet, Mary. Have a great afternoon. You too. Take care. Mm -hmm.